Meanwhile, Bolin, Opal, and Lin are on a yes. mission to rescue Su Mei Fong and her family who are being held captive by Kubira. Here we go. Chapter 10, Operation Beifong. Saving the Beifongs and saving our love. Because I vow to repair the rift that has grown betwixt us and make us whole again. Thank you, Nuktuk. Kuvira tore down all the domes. Why would she do that? To make a super weapon, I'm guessing. We'll have to go in for a closer look. Don't bother. All the pieces <gasps> have been moved. Yes! Yes! I was hoping for this. I was hoping that Toph would show up. So she left the swamp. I guess it means a lot to her then. <laughs> I just... Lin's face is so perfect. Mom? The fear in her eyes. I love how just a second ago she was being tough to Bolin and now she's, uh... Yeah, not her usual self. Oh, uh, hey, Chief. <laughs> she goes with Chief. Grandma Toph! Oh, there you go. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, right, it's his hero. This can't be happening. My feelings exactly. See, me and Bolin, we're on the same page. That's why me and Bolin get along. My name is Bolin. I'm dating your granddaughter. I mean, kind of. I may have screwed that up, but that's why I'm here, and you're my hero. Oh, I said that. Can I have a hug, too? What's up with him? He's an actor. <laughs> what? What kind of explanation is that? Yeah, I feel like that's a natural reaction to Bolin. It takes time. You gotta get to know him. I snooped around town and heard that they were taken away to some nearby prison camp. There is a factory and re-education facility not too far away. How did you end up dating the kind of dipstick who works for... Oh Kuvira? no. Tough burn. It's not his silver tongue, I can tell you that. True. Please tell me this attitude isn't hereditary. Oh, it is. You don't choose your bison. He chooses you. And once he chooses you, you can't change. Believe me, I checked. Who would have thought that... Toph's lineage would one day include an airbender. How's that for irony? The borders are secure and troops are guarding the rail lines into the city. So, what have you two geniuses come up with to fend off Kuvira? You don't need to worry about that, alright? Because you got Operation Beifong featuring Toph. So you can just pack it up. Maybe while the weapon geniuses and the spirit bridge are getting ready for battle, we should be evacuating the ordinary citizens so that if Kuvira attacks, they won't be hurt. Wow, that's, that's very, uh... Actually, a good idea. Yeah, very princely. Why do you think guys do anything great? To pick up girls. Every work of art, every song, every city evacuation. All for the ladies. Initialize phase one. So they got it under control. There's a problem with the condenser. Shut it down. Was I there can't. really a problem the with the condenser? Oh, working. there was. Tar got good quick. This channeling ring was cracked. Someone sabotaged it. Was it Julie? So, how long has it been since you two have seen each other? Little while now. Couple of years. Try 20. Wow. I thought you guys didn't get along. Sue and I finally worked out our old grievances. Good. Glad we can put all that behind us. That was easy. Right. We. There's a good chance for Lin. Smoothing out the wrinkles. I don't know what to do if I'm Lin, because Toph's not the kind of person you can confront. And she's also not the kind of person you can talk to openly about these things. Hasn't lost a step. I think I know where they are. Feel that cavern a few stories down? Why would you need soldiers guarding an empty cavern? Hmm. Cool. Oh, it's Kavira. You've been working on this the entire time, Julie. What do you think the problem is? It's a very complex machine. There are bound to be some bugs to work out. Yeah, she's sabotaging you're doing it. doing everything you can to fix those, correct? Of course, your eminence. She's lying. Lying, yeah. <laughs> we should be thinking of a way to take out Kuvira while we have the chance. Or at least destroy the cannon. Yeah, is it made of platinum? Because you can just rip it apart, right? But they don't want to give away their location. I'm here to save my family. It will take everything we have just to get out alive. She sounds so excited. Excuse me, spirit, can I talk to you? And you're gone. Okay, thanks for the help. They're abandoning the city. Mm. So let me ask you about metal bending. Sue tried to teach me, but I couldn't get the hang of it. It's funny, because Bolin actually has something that Top doesn't have, as far as I know, which is lava bending. I wonder what Top thinks of that. I did learn how to lava bend. Really? It's a very rare ability. Maybe you do have some talent. <laughs> That's like the only way to Top's heart. Talent. You think I'm talented? That means so much to me coming from my hero. Yeah, she's real encouraging. Hey, I'm blind, not deaf. Lynn is doing that classic thing of like, I'm gonna push you away and hope that you chase me. But I don't think that's the right game for Toph. She's not the chasing type. So here's something I've always been curious about. Who's Lynn's dad? Wow, she asked the big question. 
He knows he messed up. Look at his face. But yeah, I want to know too. He was a guy named Kanto. Nice man, but it didn't really work out. Kanto? We don't know Kanto, right? This is not someone who's been introduced. I guess it's too much to ask who's Suyin's father, right? Bolin doesn't want to push his luck and get wrecked. And... Okay. <laughs> yeah, he just lets it go. Wise. I can feel your enrage breathing from here. Just say what you have to say and let's get it over with. Right. Yeah, let's not linger on the fact that I grew up without a dad. No need to get all touchy. Oof, it's all coming out. You're the only one who wants to hold on to this family drama nonsense for the rest of your life. Now that we're together again, I remember why we stopped talking. Yeah. You make me furious, and you don't even know why. And when I tell you, you don't care. Once we save Sue, you and I are finished. That's true. When you're away from someone for a while, you start to imagine, like, well, how bad could it have been? But then, if you have a certain dynamic with someone, as soon as you step back into that room, it all comes back. I think one of the things she wants the most from Toph is just acknowledgement. But Toph is just not very forthcoming with her emotions or her feelings. So it seems like she might be asking for something that she just can't get. I can relate to Lynn quite strongly because I feel like growing up, I had some bitterness towards people in my life. But what changed that for me in a large way was later growing up and imagining myself in their shoes and how difficult that would be. How their intentions probably were really good. You know, it takes a lot of the weight off of it. Whatever bad things happened in the past, I don't want to carry that. I want to instead focus on gratitude and like focus on giving back and showing appreciation and just recognizing that certain things were just inevitable and that in a way they also helped me grow up and there's a funny thing about that too which is that growing up there were certain traits of my parents that I decided I never would want to be and the irony is that of course I became that way and I actually see some of those things as strengths you know and it's not over like there's still moments I have with people where old wounds come up but I think each time that happens it's an opportunity to examine them again and think how old is this throughout our lives our brains build stories and the areas in which you're most open those change and evolve over time but sometimes when you look back there's something that hasn't come up recently and so you haven't had a chance to work on it and so many of your beliefs are still the exact same ones you had when you were like 10 years old you know and so it's like why do I need that now and you can update and so I think like these are good opportunities I love how Tavish is leading the way the whole way Nice. I got you. Uh, <laughs> Cute. This weapon is proof that the Earth Empire is the strongest nation in the world. And believe me, this is only the beginning. I'm sure it is. Fire the weapon. Julie, did you do the thing? What's wrong? Probably something minor. I should be able to find the problem. The distributor pin is gone. They're on to you. You didn't discard it? Looks like some kind of distributor pin. This is how you repay me? You're a monster. I regret nothing. Wow. I love you, Julie. I didn't come all this way to stop now. Fire when ready. I want to see that town destroyed. This is straight up the Death Star. Long overdue reunion. Kuvira caught Julie and threw her in the town. What? No, I have to go save her. We've been through too much together. I can't leave her. I love that. I love that Bolin cares so much about Julie. That's so awesome. Good guy, Bolin. For all you know, she could just have been covering her butt because she made a mistake. No, Julie doesn't make mistakes. Right, that's true. I have to go with Bolin. Awesome. We can't let Opal be the coolest. If you all want to get yourselves captured again or worse, that's your business. Come on, Tav. I'm through. Ah, uh, come on. So, how have you been, Mother? I told you never to call me that. Ah. <laughs> uh. I know you felt the effects of Kuvira cutting down spirit vines. It's time for you to help me save it from Kuvira. Wow. What you want is exactly what Kuvira wants. To use spirits as a weapon in a human war. The answer is no. That's so interesting. So first, I think it's really cool that Korra is, like, taking the Avatar thing to new heights, right? Like, it's always been about keeping balance, but why not, you know? Why not have humans and spirits work together? Also, I've been thinking that the Kuvira Korra comparison is definitely not a coincidence, right? Like, Bolin says that as a joke, like, Kuvira is basically Korra, but then also, Korra sees her own face in Kuvira when she's fighting her, and now the spirit is saying that they want the same thing. That's not a coincidence. There's something about Kuvira in Korra, and that's something that she still has to face, I guess. And part of that might be the fact that Korra always saw herself as someone who would use her avatar powers and use her force to get her way, and that she was someone who would bring about her will through strength. And that's Kuvira's thing too. But recently Korra has undergone a period of reflection and, hum and building humility, 
And so she's been forced to confront some of those aspects and kind of question what the meaning of that is for her. I don't know if she's found an answer yet. I don't know if she's found the new version of Korra that incorporates all this information. So it'll be cool to see how this plays out. Please, listen. If spirits and humans are going to live together, we have to work with each other. It was a good try. Opal? No! We have to stop the test! I'm glad he still cares about something. There you go. Whoa. They got really lucky. I have so much faith in this team. Yes. <laughs> Cool. Nice. This is a good fight. Whoa, did she just put that on his armor? What the heck? That is so cool. Nice to see Kuvira meet someone who can match her power. That's dirty, using her own technique against her. I guess you did train her probably, right? That was amazing. Here it comes. Yes. I think I know who did that. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You give metal benders a bad name. <laughs> and she throws it an insult. Wow, that was such a good scene. I love that. I love seeing Suigen and Lin fight together, and Top being there just made it extra special. If you can just find some way not to hate me, maybe that's enough, at least for me. Me too. I never had any family except for my brother until a few years ago, and reuniting with them made me realize how special it is. Ah, enough! I love how Bolin just stole a hug there. But yeah, it's nice to see them reconcile. I guess the circumstances kind of put things in perspective. Those old squabbles seem kind of petty in comparison to the threats they face, that the world faces. Aren't you coming back to Republic City with us, Grandma? No, my fighting days are over. You gotta leave it to the kids. I feel sad, again, thinking this might be the last time I see Tom. Oh, but she's in the comics, right? I think someone told me that. Okay. Sadness eliminated. And don't be too hard on Bolin for working with Kuvira. His heart was in the right place. That's what I'm saying. I'm afraid I have bad news to deliver to Republic City. Kuvira is going to attack in two weeks. Wow, that, that episode was so much fun. I want to see more. I kind of want a top to just crush Kuvira. But I guess you got to say some for Korra because she's the main character. Once again, these guys managed to sneak in some of those extra elements that you don't think you're going to get, but you're going to get. So Lin actually got some nice closure here, which is fantastic. And so did Bolin which is great. The series is ramping up as it winds down. Only three episodes left. <laughs> but before this video ends, I gotta give a very, very special shout out to everybody who joined the Goodwin Squad on Patreon. A special shout out goes to Mini Money Roll, Emmanuel J. Cruz, Iron Luke 2001, Jaden Tambukab, and Alexandra Mainzinger. Thank you to you and to all my patrons and to everyone who continues to watch and support the videos. As always, I love you guys and I'll see you next time for episode 11. <laughs>